So I figure this next video is going to be me introducing the bus. So facts about the bus. It's an 07 IC integrated coach RE300. Uh, it's a rear engine pusher. Um, we've owned the bus now for two years. And in those two years, we bought it straight from a dealer that was selling it from a school district. The cool thing with that is it actually came with maintenance records. It came with uh, service history. And we also got to find out that it was not a route bus. This one was a reserve bus. So when buses would break down in the school district, this one would be called out to finish the route and then head back to the maintenance yard and hang out has extremely low miles, has 115,000. With it being an 07, uh, 2007 was the last year of part electronic, part mechanical engines. Uh, 08 and up went full electronic with the fuel systems, oil pressure systems. Uh, There's a lot of stuff that changed uh, in 08. So a little fun tip. Uh, so when we purchased the bus, still had bus windows in its seats all of that and so we started the process we brought it home after purchasing it and we ripped the seats out of it we proceeded to start doing the interior with the bus windows in it the big problem with that was the bus windows leaked so thankfully i live out here on the oregon coast where it rains for 11 and a half months out of the year and lo and behold uh, we quickly learned that the windows just were not going to cut it. So pulled them, I resealed them. After that, six of the windows still leaked. I pulled those, found out four of the windows still leaked even after sealing them twice and then realized that the aluminum frames are actually pinched together so tight that it creates the seal in the frames themselves. So. I had four windows that were damaged. I didn't want to hunt for other windows. And I was like, you know what? Let's put a pause on the interior. Let's get it watertight. Let's get it taken care of. The weather, the rain broke, still overcast, but I figured this would be a great time to take you guys on a walkthrough of Atlas and kind of give you the lay of the land, what we plan on doing with the interior. So let's go. So, cool thing with these buses, all right? One thing that I believe IC did correctly was all of their stuff is on the international website. So if you need any schematics, if you need any kind of service, maintenance, part numbers, it's all on the international page. Cool thing is you can buy a little flash drive for about, I think it's six or $700 now, but it comes with every make and model that Navstar, so the electronically controlled systems, Navstar has in vehicles. So International, CAT, uh, IC, uh, even dating back to the days uh, manufacturer, oh, Amtran, even those buses, uh, if they had Navstar electronics or electronically controlled systems, they had that information all on that flash drive. So if you have an IC, if you have an International, Definitely check out Navstar. Um, I would call them, give them your VIN, verify that your VIN is uh, inside that system before you make that like five, $600 purchase. So I am in no way affiliated with Navstar. I just absolutely love their equipment. And the fact that I have a flash drive that I can plug into my computer and I can instantly find a fuel pump, fuel filter, oil filter, fuel water separator filter, um, the transmission control filter, all of that. Injector pump, high pressure oil pump, all of that is in that flash drive. And then also when we start going full time in this, we also plan on buying the uh, on-demand diagnostic tool. It plugs into your guys' service port. On my bus, I have two. I have one up front by the driver's seat. I have one in the back in the engine bay at the main control board uh, to start the engine remotely. The cool thing with that is that when you plug it in, 
it allows you real time so while you're driving to figure out what your rpms are what your oil pressure is what your cylinder head temp is all of that all of those systems that are putting out information you will know as you're driving down the road so let's do a quick walk around and i will show you the bus All right, so quick specs on the bus. Motor has a DT466. It is the last year of the partially mechanical, partially electronic motor. 08 and up, they decided to go all electronic for all the systems. Um, so this is probably the last year of the good buses that everybody talks about. I know that some other manufacturers they did go until 2010 uh, with some of their bus engines and transmissions uh, but this one like i said it does have the dt 466 it does have the allison uh, mb 3060 uh, we've already been traveling in it and we absolutely love it when you're pulling into a campground or you're pulling in somewhere that other people are camping at or boondocking at uh, people absolutely love it. They'll come over, they'll knock on the door. We usually sit down and talk for an hour, hour and a half with them. And they just want to know the story about it. So here we are. Let's head on inside. All right. So we're up front. We have couches both sides. These couches, actually all of this interior stuff will be coming out in the springtime because now that we have the exterior sealed and it's all ready to go we can start back on getting this interior finished with that being said so the basic layout is we're going to have the dual couches and then we're going to move back that'll be the kitchen area left hand side behind the driver it's going to be a bathroom uh, passenger side opposite of the bathroom we are going to have a kind of dinette bar area with two or three chairs because the bathroom is going to come out to basically half if not almost half of the middle of the bus because me and my wife were big people and we plan on wanting as much room as we want uh, in the shower so we can uh, enjoy it instead of touching the sides and freezing ourselves so up front by the stairs there was a giant uh, heater and defroster we're actually going to be putting a diesel heater up front um, and then the rest of it will be a built-in cabinet. Uh, I also have torn out the wraparound dash. I'm going to rebuild all of that in wood and then possibly wrap it. I don't know. We're not there yet. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start grabbing the camera and start moving stuff around. All right. So up front we have obviously the driver's area. So I completely gutted the entire front of the bus, built a new surround inside here. If you guys have ever worked on an IC, once you pull that heater, you can literally see the ground. There's no floor there. So yeah, there's gonna be built-in cabinets all along the bottom here, uh, up top. So the area in between the two supports here and here, that's going to be a built-in TV. Also on that side and the other side is going to be built-in cabinets. Those built-in cabinets are just going to be there so we can store all of our road materials, um, proof of insurance, registration, all that, all that stuff. And then over there is probably going to be hats, gloves, stuff. So when we get into colder climates, uh, it'll be right there at the door and we can just snag it and out we go. As you can tell, the roof is actually partially insulated. Um, I went with the inch and a half formula in the middle and then cut it into three pieces so it conforms to the roof. Um, I actually went with the Artec three and a quarter thermal sided foam 
And the reason why is because these hat channels are an inch and a half thick. I figure with a piece of three quarter on the roof of the bus with the thermal facing out, and then another layer of foam on top of that with the thermal layer facing in, you'll get that thermal bridging. You'll be able to uh, keep the interior of the bus uh, warmer in the winter, colder in the summer. You want that. You don't want to be baking yourself out of here. We do plan on in the far back having a mini split above the bedroom area, uh, but we'll get to that point uh, as we proceed down the bus. As you can tell, I am six foot two and I stand in here, no problem. I got about maybe uh, four inches, uh, maybe five without even the ceiling. Me and my wife, we actually love the metal roofs. We're gonna be putting the metal back in because we lost the bus windows. We, we really love bus life, but we just couldn't do the bus windows because of how bad they were leaking. But metal roof is gonna go back in. Uh, we are gonna do a gloss white, so it's highly reflective. And then along the uh, top rail right here will be accent lighting that will be indirect light. It will actually shine against the gloss white and allow indirect light it's not as hard on your eyes people don't have to look at the light the lights being color changing when we plug it into music we'll be able to get the party started so uh, as we move farther back you can tell we have kitchen sink it's very basic right now we just use a big five gallon uh, bucket of water on the countertop and then over here i actually converted a full-size stove the full-size stove works great converted to just run on propane super easy you can buy the kits online i just know that when we go full-time boondocking and stuff we're gonna find ourselves christmas time thanksgiving i want a turkey so that's that's the reason why we're going full-size appliances all right okay and then also so from the sink over to this hat channel that's actually going to be a full-size fridge. It's going to come up to about here. Uh, I've already double, triple, quadruple checked it. It's going to be able to fit in here no problem because this is a high top bus. Uh, and then from the hat channel here, that hat channel there is going to be the bathroom. It's actually going to come out to about almost halfway of the bus because I plan on being able to shower and being able to use my hands in my hair and have the water above my hair because I'm six foot two and that's just gonna be what it is. With that being said, with the bathroom coming out so far, as you can tell, there's a little bit of damage on the wood. All the lower walls are actually gonna get ripped out now that's waterproof. I'm going to finish insulating the walls. I'm going to do a eight mil polyplastic as a thermal barrier and water prevention barrier. And then the back side of the wood that actually will be getting screwed to the side of the bus will have um marine epoxy paint on the outside so no way water penetration or moisture is going to get through three different levels of protection and it's going to keep this bus running and driving down the road as long as we plan on keeping it so with that being said bathroom over here so from the Countertop here, this empty window here, there's gonna be a transition where the countertop will come up and then there's gonna be a bar table for those two windows and then two or three uh, small chairs right there. So those chairs are going to have the ability to tuck under. I will also do a hinge desk so the 13 inch or 12 inch wide uh, tabletop will be able to drop out to a 20 inch wide tabletop but yeah I wanted somewhere that we did not have to eat in the living room I wanted to be able to sit crack open some windows be able to enjoy the breeze and yeah have fun so from this window here so this hat channel to that hat channel it's going to be a full kind of armoire against the wall the full size floor to ceiling will be able to have an upper clothes rack and then it'll be built in drawers on the bottom. That's gonna be my wife's over here. 
where we're gonna have all of the water lines and stuff uh, from this hat channel to this hat channel here. Uh, it's going to be another full size built in kind of armoire. But on my side, I don't need as many drawers. So man, it's hard to film in here. Um, I don't need as many drawers. So the built in washer dryer combo is actually going to go in the bottom here because there's going to be the tanks underneath the bus. Uh, another fun fact about having a rear engine bus, which is nice, is I have nothing underneath it. There's nothing. From where I'm standing forward, I can put all my belly tanks, I can put gray tanks, black tanks, I can have a spare tire carrier, all of that I can build in, in between the frame rails. I got some airlines and then the main chassis wiring. That's it. So rear engine bus, no drive line, no exhaust, no side mounted fuel tank. I know some side mounted fuel tanks are like 60 gallons. This one is equipped with a hundred gallon belly tank. We could literally go anywhere we want, but with today's fuel prices, that's like a $700 bill to fill it. So it doesn't go past half very often. So we'll keep going back and I'll show you a little more. So in the back, in the bedroom, so from this hat channel here, this vertical hat channel to this hat channel is going to be bedroom. So from the back to the very end is going to be all bedroom. This right here is a king size bed. Uh, with a king size bed, I still have about six to eight inches on either side. Up top in between right here is going to be a mini split. The reason why we're doing a mini split over like an AC unit is because the mini split's gonna be able to pump out a little more without draining as much power and if we stick to a 110 system, the 110 system will be able to run off of our battery bank, no problem. We wanted to put the main split in the bedroom for the sole purpose that if it gets too crazy hot on this wall of the built-in, I'm gonna have like a little 15 inch TV. We can just sit chill in the bedroom, nice and cool. We don't have to worry about the rest of the bus. We can just relax and enjoy the day from the bedroom. In the back where the dual intakes are, so that black thing over there, and this black i'm still using my foot i'm still i'm still learning guys and this black intake over here those are the service inlets for air intake to keep the motor cool because it is a rear engine bus uh, a lot i've seen a lot of people actually cut those out and remove them that's a highly bad idea if you don't have if you're not putting in like a scoop on the side to redirect air in, you're gonna make that motor run hotter they already run hot i mean if you've ever taken a thermal temp to one of these things after driving for 12 hours, you'll understand. So I'm keeping mine. I'm going to make some built-ins overhead in kind of this area. Oh, sorry, my bad. In this area here. So they're going to be dual cabinets. The angles I'm actually going to turn into a day bed. So there's going to be cushions behind the bed that me and my wife can uh, lay back there kind of hammock style and be able to read a book or me draw i love drawing so yeah we already have the uh fresh water tank installed it's 100 gallon don't mind a bucket a lot of you uh van lifers and off-grid bus lifers already know the bucket don't have to explain the bucket but until we get a full-time bathroom in here the bucket's the best bet so uh with that being said uh let me show you kind of what i have left to do on the outside and then we'll take you into the engine room all right so on the back of the bus or on the top of the bus i still have yet to do the rooftop deck i still have yet to do all of my solar setup but i plan on with this 40 foot behemoth is so from the forward hatch forward i'm going to be running four 550 watt monocrystalline panels. Uh, they're rated at 550 watts a piece. They're kind of big, they're commercial grade. They're hurricane, they're basically hurricane ready. You figure you're driving down the road 70 miles an hour, you have a 70 mile an hour wind, you're now, that solar panel is now whipping at 140 miles an hour. You wanna make sure that it's gonna stay on the roof of your bus. So they're hurricane rated panels. Um, and then from the back hatch to the rear, 
I plan on running probably three if I can fit it of the 550 watt monocrystalline panels. And then in the middle, in between both hatches, uh, from the outside of the hatches all the way will be our rooftop deck. And the reason why is because a lot of rooftop decks are on the rear because they're front engine buses. Uh, I still have to worry about that added weight over the axle. I highly doubt if I put the rooftop deck on the back, the 38,000 pound weight rating, I'm not even gonna come near it. I've seen people do full roof raises, just massive builds and still 10 to 15,000 pounds under their overall carrying limit. With that being said, we also plan on bringing our canoe. I did need a long enough, um, sorry with the, the finger use again. I did want a long enough uh, rooftop deck to be able to store a 16 foot canoe. It's a great canoe, it's a cargo canoe. I just gotta figure out a way. I was thinking of using a reverse hinge to be able to offload and load the kayak up and down the side of the bus. And I also do not want any outside ladders to get to the roof. Uh, the only way I plan on getting to the rooftop deck is both of these hatches. And those hatches are getting swapped out for marine hatches uh, because they have their see-through. I believe they're like plexiglass or safety glass that can yet again withstand the force of mother nature. And when you're traveling down the road, you don't want those things to fly open. You don't want them to break. That's kind of the idea of what we still have left to do on the outside. Both of the uh, these these wheels, entire package, I'm doing new ones. Uh, it's going to get 22.5 uh, triple polish Arconian wheels. So it'll look really good. And brand new six tires. But that's later down the road don't need them yet these tires are great they're still doing amazing but that's uh kind of the overview of the bus also a little further in here but so cool thing oh man it's breezy gotta shut the door all right so really cool thing about these buses is this right here i have a full garage i mean i have a garage that if i can pan through here so i have a big empty spot here that will have a built-in toolbox as well as a generator I have all of the room that I need in the world to be able to service my motor, do oil, basically PMs, preventative maintenance, 
I can sit and hang out in here, which makes it convenient. Overhead lights, you can turn those on. Uh, I don't have power hooked into the battery because it's in power save mode. Uh, you can, we have the, let's turn around here. We have the main control box so I can remotely start and operate the bus from back here so I'm not running up there to turn off and on the bus. I have the ability to do all that from that box. But yeah, this is it, dude. Full pass through. The other door is over there that I use for power and water. Yeah, I absolutely love these buses. If you've ever been stuck on the side of the road and you've been working on your bus and it's a dog nose style where you gotta flip the hood forward and be out in the elements, the snow, the ice, the rain, the sleet, inclement wind that's blowing your tools off the top of the motor. Yeah, no, I'm, I wasn't down for that. And then I was thinking, oh, that'd be awesome. Front engine flat nose. Well, there you go again. You know, you gotta do any engine work. You're popping that little dog house off and now you got diesel fumes you got oil smells all inside your living room it's just not not what i want so with that being said we went with this the icre 300 uh makes it convenient when you're driving i can talk to my wife i can even run like streaming radio uh from my phone not have to have it plugged into a sound bar or something to make the noise bigger to be able to hear it. I can actually drive at 70 miles an hour, barely any noise. I still have yet to insulate the rest of the bus and I am already at the point to where we can just carry a conversation. I can run my music while I'm driving and just have fun. We'll, uh, we'll hop back out of here and we'll take you back for my, my quick little outro. So, all right guys. Oh, but yeah, awesome, awesome garages, awesome ability to have while you're on the road. You don't have to be out in the rain. You don't have to be out in the sleet. You don't have to be out in the wind. Um, makes it extremely convenient. So, all right. So here's Atlas. Um, I kind of wanted to end this video with thank you. Uh, the reason why is because in 10 days, we have over 500 subscribers, obviously with the help of other channels. Atlas does have two pages, one on Facebook, one on Instagram. When we travel, we tend to post to those so people can kind of see the bus out and about. Go check those out. I appreciate it, my wife appreciates it. Once this bus is done, we will be full-timing traveling in the bus, so anything that I can do to help the community grow around the YouTube page because this is really going to be the way that I can get these little short videos or movies out to you guys and projects that I do around the house. I would like to say thank you. You guys viewing are going to help us be able to not only show as many people as we can. I don't know. Should I, should I do a giveaway for some on my 1,000 subscribers? I think YouTube, you have to have like 1,000 subscribers and like 4,000 watch hours or something like that to be monetized. So maybe for my 1,000 uh, subscribers, I will come out and possibly do a, uh, do a short little you know weekend, help somebody uh, with their bus build or come out. You know what, how about this? Okay, so. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, I'll come out with a video. I don't know what the video is going to be, but I plan on taking a weekend of my time and giving it to somebody here. So if you live in Oregon, if you watch the channel, share it, like it, subscribe, let me know that you are here in Oregon in the comments we'll make it happen i'll come out and help you guys whether it's bus whether it's vehicle related whether it's house related i have no problem giving up a weekend of my time for people that are going to sit here and watch me 
take others on adventures and enjoy it themselves. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. How, let's see how fast this channel can grow by the help of all of you. So from the bottom of my heart and my wife's heart, she's not here. She's at work, unfortunately, but we thank you. We thank you because you're taking time out of your day to come and watch us. So thank you. So if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to follow on this channel and see what I'm doing, it will be this guy. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.